Hello everybody! Welcome to Tea with Key. That would be me. Um, this is Industry Insight with Joanna Key. I'm a professional script reader, writer, actor, and producer. And today we are going to be talking about submitting a short to film festivals, um, which I am actively doing right now. So it's it's fresh on my brain, so we're going to talk about it. And uh, today I am drinking one of my all-time favorite teas. Now it's a little bit different. You might not think of it as a tea um, and not everybody likes it, but this is where kombucha and I am drinking GT Synergy. This is actually my favorite flavor um, of this brand, Gingerberry. I love it. I've been, um, I've been sick the past week and um, this I don't remember the founder's name, but the founder of this particular company, of um, this uh, kombucha, um, he created, um, it's specifically, there's a trilogy flavor that they have. It's like three different flavors of something mixed together. That's why it's a trilogy. But anyway, he created it to help his mother who was sick. And um, so this is, it's a healthy drink. For me, it's like an alternative to soda because it's um, effervescent, so it's very bubbly. And it's got it's made with green teas and black teas, um, but I drink it because it's healthy for you. Whenever I'm whenever I'm sick, um, I I drink the ginger one, or I'll drink my ginger berry. But I drink them all the time. Um, it's probiotic. It's also just an acquired taste. So um, I love it. Not everybody loves it, but I mean honestly, like if I could drink it uh, every day, I would, and I kind of do. So. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm drinking today, and mm, it's got this weird, like, uh, the way, I don't, I don't know all the specifics, uh, my friend, she, you can actually make kombucha, my friend explained to me how she did it, or how she does it, and there's like this kind of, uh, I don't know how to explain it, it's like a slimy thing in here <laughs> that kind of floats around, and that's, I don't know all the specific scientific stuff with it, but anyways, it's just something to watch out for. If you've never had kombucha before, um, just be aware that there's like a little slimy thing usually that's in here. Um, and there's actually a brand, I do want to warn you, there's a brand of kombucha that um, is falsely advertised. It's actually owned by Pepsi. Um, it's Kevita, K-E-V-I-T-A. Um, it's starting to be like more in a lot of places because it's owned by Pepsi so they can distribute it don't drink it. It's not real raw kombucha. Um, it's actually been processed and there's like a whole lawsuit about it. So this is my favorite brand. Um, and this is my favorite flavor, which is gingerberry. But if you're just starting out drinking kombucha, my suggestion is that you go with a sweeter one because it's a little bit of an acquired taste. Um, start with, uh, there's a strawberries are always really good flavors to start with. This brand has one called Strawberry Serenity, which is a good one uh, to begin with. If you're like, okay, let me see what this kombucha is about, and then you can kind of try other flavors. So, um, so yeah, this is this is one of my favorite drinks um, in the world because I don't I don't drink um, I don't drink alcohol or or anything, and um, and so this is uh, this is kind of what I drink to relax and also to help me feel better <laughs> um, whenever I am not feeling so well, which has been the past week. So my voice sound, might sound a little bit different today. Um, it sounded different last week, which was the beginning of my being sick. Um, so forgive me if you, if I sound weird. Mm. All right. That's delicious. Ah, so I'm so happy that you're here with me today. Um, like I said, we're talking about submitting a short to film festivals and, um, I love film festivals. Um, I just love the, the energy there and networking with other filmmakers and everyone wants to get into a film festival with their film, right? Like who doesn't? Um, and actually speaking of film festivals, uh, Protectress, my fantasy action film, um, let me see here. We actually just got notified that, okay, so I mentioned last week um, our next uh, screening is at Atlanta Comic Con. So if you don't know, Protectress is a fantasy action film um, that I wrote, produced, and star in, directed by America Young. We are currently on a festival run. We've already won seven awards. We've been accepted into 16 festivals. So we're doing very, very well. Um, so our next, our next, uh, I'm just gonna pop it in the comments here for you so that you can check it out if you want to. Our next screening is, um, 
<clears throat> at Atlanta Comic Con, which is obviously in Atlanta, Georgia. And, um, and then at the end of July, we will be at Los Angeles Diversity Film Festival. I'm just finding it here so I can pop it in the comments for you. There we go. We'll be at Los Angeles Diversity Film Festival, and I actually will be there in attendance at that one. I'm not going to be able to attend Atlanta Comic Con, um, but uh, Los Angeles Diversity Film Festival, West Hollywood, if you're able to come, I will be there. Our screening is on July 28th at 1 o'clock p.m., and I think there'll be a Q&A afterwards. So I'll be there. I'm sure there's going to be other people from our team there. We're just kind of confirming and getting everybody on the same page right now. So, um, but you can definitely count on me being there and, um, go to our website, protectorsfilm.com. Um, if you want to see the trailer and also for all our future screenings. And if you put in your email, then you'll get a really cool behind the scenes video and kind of see, you know, what we did on set and sword fighting and all that stuff. So, so that's that. Um, Ooh, and also I've just been working on my, uh, my female characters course. So, um, you know, I am developing a course on um, teaching people how to write female characters because one of the things I consistently see as far as I'm a professional script reader, you know, um, why scripts get rejected. Yes, there's many reasons, but one of the big reasons that I actually see, one of the things that is lacking consistently is a lack of well-developed female characters. You might hear them termed as strong female characters. Um, I don't like that term, but um, so I decided, you know, this is something that's really needed. I really see it. And um, and so I'm developing that right now. I've been working on that. If you're interested um, in knowing when that goes live, femalecharacters.com, I put it in the comments. Um, you can go and, and check that out. So, um, well, my eye is a little bit itchy. All right, let's get to talking about our topic today, which is submitting a short film to film festivals, which you already know from what I've just said that I've been doing a lot. And we're about to, I'm in post-production with another film um, that I'm helping to produce. Uh, and we're about to start submitting for uh, that once it's done in post, which should be pretty soon. Um, that project is called a period piece. I put that in the comments if you want to check that out. So I have some um, experience with this and I wanted to share what I learned. I actually was inspired by, um, there's a women filmmakers group um, that I'm a part of and um, somebody asked the question, um, Lola, Lola asked the question. She wanted to know if anyone had had any success with submitting your short to festivals and if there was any tips or wisdom, you know, like what kinds of projects are a good fit or, you know, which aren't really worth the entry fee. Um, and I wrote back to her and I just realized there's more that I can share on this and I would love to share it with, with everyone, with you. Um, cause I've gotten questions on this before and, um, and I was like, well, there must be something I'm doing right because of the success that I've been having with Protectress. So here is what I have to share with you. So these are my tips. Um, just a second, let me get a drink. I love kombucha. Okay, so let's get started. And and let's get started from, I kind of go through it um, um, based on kind of production phases because I think a lot of people, um, and this was my mindset before I, I, you know, started creating my own projects and, um, you know, getting out on the festival circuit. My mindset was that I thought that you really didn't know what film festivals that you could enter, or you really didn't start that process until after you were done with post or maybe in post. Um, but that's actually not true. You can know and start, you know, making a list of your target film festivals from pre-production. I mean, once your script is done, and even sometimes while you're writing your script, if it's being written, um, I mean, if you're the one that's writing it, uh, I wouldn't recommend, you know, I'd recommend just focusing on the script. But once you know what your script is about, um, you can already start making a list. So already from pre-production, from the development of your project. Um, and that is because from your story, you already are going to be able to know who your audience is. So um, I will use my current film as an example. Um, Protectress is a fantasy action. Um, we, um, it stars women. I 
was intentional on writing roles for women, starring women, women in leadership. Um, and I was also intent on, I already knew beforehand that I was going to have a female director. So these kind of things, it's, it's kind of like, um, if you've ever written a press release for your film, which, um, I'm not going to talk about that today, but if you guys want me to get into that later, let me know. Um, film festivals, basically, I think of it like marketing. It's, it's like, it's marketing and networking. Um, it's, it's really a business sort of thing. And that's why, you know, you have to know who your audience is, um, I've been working in, um, you know, I'm a professional script reader. One of the things that I do when I read scripts is I will tell a producer or I'll tell a distributor or, um, you know, the sales agent who the target audience is, you know, who's going to like this film. So I kind of had that mindset already. Um, it's not that difficult, though, to figure out. Um, if you need help figuring yours out, you know, um, like I said, I'm a professional script reader. You can go to my website, moviescriptmasters.com. Um, well, actually here, I'll just, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the comments in case you want to. So moviescriptmasters.com, um, you know, I'm happy to read your script and, um, you know, let you know who I think the audience, um, would be. So, um, so I know who my audience is. So Protectress is a, it's a women, a f mostly, um, sorry, women led production. Um, so that's something that film festivals look at, like who are your key um, players in, in your production? So the producer, the writer, and the director. So these people are really important. So first of all, in my film, all three of these people were women, are women. Um, all of these three people are diverse. Um, and so I am going to look for, and I have looked, I have sought out women-centric film festivals and diverse film festivals. I'm half Asian, I am the writer, and I'm the producer, I'm also the star. Um, that, it's kind of like, I was mentioning press releases because it's like, what are those interesting pieces of your film that might draw somebody's attention? You know, who's gonna wanna watch this? You know, what makes it interesting? Okay, so my film is fantasy action, stars women, written, produced, directed by women, uh, writer, producer, star, is the same person and our stars, uh, we performed our own stunts. All that is interesting. So um, so all of those facts you kind of um, have once you have your script. So that's why I'm saying um, you don't have to wait until post-production to start making your target film festival list. Um, obviously you can't you know, submit to them until your film is done, but we'll talk about that in a second. So, um, so, you know, I'm looking down because my scripts are here, or my scripts, my scripts, my notes are here. I'm so used to saying scripts. So, you know, the genre of your film, my film is a fantasy action, okay? So, my film is not a typical um, film festival piece, and that's something that you need to know for your film, okay? So, um, what is your genre? What is it about? Is this something that you might normally see, you know, Everybody wants to be in those big film festivals, you know, Cannes or South by Southwest, or we want to go to TIFF, um, and those are great goals, but you have to know your product, and actually, when you know your product, you're going to have greater success. You'll have less disappointment. Um, I saw a comment from somebody who said that they had lost a lot of money submitting to the bigger film festivals. Well, you have to know if your film is actually for that audience. You know, there's some specific, there's some certain genres, you know, there's certain um, concepts and, you know, storylines or, you know, if you have a celebrity that's attached or whatever that fit those big film festivals. My film is a fantasy action. It's a genre film festival. I'm not wasting my money or my time on big film festivals. I could, I would basically, I could just throw my money in the trash and I would have the same result because it's going to be a waste of my time and money. I want the people, I mean, it's not just that. It's like, yeah, that would be great. But I want to reach the people that want to see my film. So those festivals, if you have something like a sci-fi, you have something like a fantasy, the genre type films, um, bigger film festivals, not so much. Maybe South by Southwest. Um, and this is the thing. So when people say do your research, um, it's such a general thing. You know, people do your research, you know, and then you'll find the festivals. It's true. It's going to take some time. So how do I know what a film, you know, a typical, you know, film festival piece is like? How do I know, you know, which 
festivals are accepting the genre ones, I research. Um, and that is done by a couple things, which I'll get and I'll get into a little bit later. Because the other thing I want to talk about here is from the beginning and pre-production stage, you are you already know what your film is about. You already know you can already start listing out. Okay, what are the kind of interesting things? Maybe you have an all-female cast. Um, maybe you have a completely diverse cast. Um, you know, maybe it's about a certain topic that hasn't been touched on a lot. Maybe it's on a certain topic that's really big in the news right now. Um, you know, maybe you have a certain celebrity involved um, that has, a, you know, connections or is big with, you know, certain genres. Um, you know, like if you had, um, I'm just going to, you know, Kevin Sorbo is the first one. Kevin Sorbo, Hercules. Um, if you have Kevin Sorbo, you know, he's big with certain audiences. You know, who, where might that play well? So um, it's a producer mindset, basically, that you're, you're in whenever you're looking at this. So um, the other thing in this stage, in pre-production stage, that you need to decide that will help you on which film festivals and where to submit it to so that you can have success is what are your goals? And, and what your goals are, for me, I set that before I even wrote my script. I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my project. So, so for Protectress, I was not thinking about making money. If you're trying to make money off of a short film, that's very difficult. It's extremely rare if anybody makes their money back. Um, there's different reasons why people do it. You know, real footage, um, whatever. I'll tell you the reasons why I did what I did. Um, you've already heard me talk about, you know, my um, personal reasons, which was, you know, that I wanted to see women portrayed in a different way. I wanted to portray a female hero. I wanted to see a half Asian female hero on screen because I never got to see that whenever I was growing up and I still don't even see it now. Um, but your career goals, your career goals um, are what I'm talking about. You know, what are your goals for this film? So what I intended was that I wanted people to, I wanted a, an audience. I want to build my audience. So I'm not focused on making money. I'm focused on getting as many people's eyeballs on my film as I can. Those are two different things. So um, building an audience and then also wanted to connect with other and other people in the industry um, um, so that they could get to know my work. Again, that's part of building an audience. Um, building an audience for me was both, you know, helping to create fans of my work so that people know who I am um, and, and just, you know, people that aren't even in the industry, but then also in the industry, you know, helping to make those connections so that people know my work both as a writer and a producer and as an actor. Um, so those are my goals. And my goal specifically with this film, with Protectress, was I am going to make a feature about it. This is a proof of concept. Okay, so I also in my mind I have... I want to meet those people. I want to put my film out and have the people see it who, you know, want to be a part of that process. Um, helping me to make the feature, you know, helping get it made. So all of that plays into your film festival, um, the film festival game, basically. I think people go into it blind. Um, they don't have their goals and they don't understand who their audience is. These are the first two things that you can start thinking about from the pre-production stage. Um, and um, so those two things, goals and who's your audience? Who is your audience? So <clears throat> let's keep going. Um, now, I had talked about who your producer, your director, and your writer are. Now, those are, those are key people on your team um, that when you go to, you submit for any film festival, especially like if you're, um, you know, I've been submitting to a lot of diverse film festivals, women-centric film festivals, you know, they'll specifically have rules on there that say things like, um, you know, one of these three people, you know, the producer, writer, director, um, or the star, you know, needs to be a woman or it needs to be, a be about a female topic. Um, so those, those key people are usually the ones that um, film festivals look at, um, you know, like who is making this film happen? Who are the filmmakers here? Um, who is the focus of this film? Okay, sorry, my throat was getting a little dry. All right. <clears throat> the other thing about your producer and your director and your writer is who do they have connections with? 
Okay, so it's not just about you. Remember, you have a whole team that helped you make this film happen. So um, this is moving a little bit more towards production. So once you have your cast and crew locked, um, you might have to do this, you know, after uh, more when you're in post because your crew can change, your cast can change. Everybody knows that those are moving parts up until the film is shot, sometimes even after the film is shot. But basically, once you know who your cast and crew are, you can ask them, ask your cast and crew, do you have any connections with any film festivals? So, um, for example, with Protectress, um, my director, America Young, um, she has connections with a, com a couple film festivals. We actually got... Um, waivers, you know, to submit to film festivals because she was connected. So don't, you know, make make use of your team and especially your key players. Ask them, writer, director, and producer, have have you had a film in any uh you know in, in any festivals? Where are you an alumni? Because those festivals, they already know that person's work, they already know that they do great work, they're more likely to have you as part of their festival, or at least to review your work. It's like, you know, our director in your cover letter, you write, you know, our director is an alumni of your festival, um, you know, and then, oh, okay, well, we know that name. You know, it's like anything, it's referrals. You know, this is a, you know, any business is a people business. People, you know, it's like, oh, okay, well, I know that person. So referrals, and first, the first referrals, I would say, you know, with your cast and crew, who, who, who do they have connections with? Um, and then um, referrals from other filmmakers. Now, how I find referrals from other filmmakers is I'm just a part of, you know, a bunch of different filmmaking groups. Um, I'll see people post about it. You know, I've asked. I'll put a post out there. Sometimes, you know, the, some Facebook groups. I'll say, hey, you know, um, I'm looking. I have this kind of film. Um, you know, does anybody have any festivals they would recommend? And then you'll get people that are popping in there, you know, saying, oh, I had a great experience with this one, you know, go here, whatever. Um, and the more specific you can be to, you know, I have a short film um, because um, different films are good for, dif different festivals are good for different types of films. Um, some festivals that are good for features are not necessarily, you know, um, good for shorts. So I, you know, if I'm posting, I would always say, um, you know, I have a fantasy action, you know, women-led short film, you know, does anybody have any recommendations, you know, for festivals that they've had a good experience with? Um, personal experience, you know, with a film festival um, is the best referral, I feel like. Um, so, um, so asking your cast and crew for their connections and referrals, and then asking, you know, the wider community of filmmakers, you know, who have you had a good experience with? Who would you recommend? Um, there's two um, main platforms that um, you can submit for films on if you don't know. Um, they are Film Freeway and Without a Box. Um, my preference, I like Film Freeway. And the reason why I like Film Freeway is because they have ratings on all of their films. So any filmmaker that has submitted to a film festival um, on there or they've gotten in, you scroll to the bottom of the page of the film festival um, on Film Freeway and you can see a star rating on there and they have like four or I forget how many different categories from communication, um, what the festival was actually like, um, you know, like all different ratings like that. And, and I love that um, because on Without a Box you don't get that and you're just kind of submitting blindly. Um, people's experience with the film festival um, is highly valuable because <laughs> like anything on the internet, People show you what they want you to see. So film festival is going to make themselves look bad, right? So that's why things like Yelp and, you know, stuff like that are, are valuable to consumers um, because we actually get the real experience of some people. And you need to make sure and read people's reviews because even though something has a lower rating, just like anything, you know, like Amazon ratings or Yelp ratings, people rate things low just because they're crazy sometimes. <laughs> um, so look at the reviews. Um, on Film Freeway is, I love for that. Look at the reviews and read the reviews. Look at, you know, and it, go, it goes to your goals. You know, what do you want? You know, do you want to be able to go and have um, that connection with people? You know, did they have good communication? Um, all of that. So um, keep in mind your goals when you're looking at people's reviews, um, you know, for what you want to do. So um, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. 
Okay, so um, let me just give you a couple examples um, for me with what ha what I just talked about with Protectress. So, um, so one of the festivals that I got into that we won an award at um, was called World Fest and uh, World Fest International Film Festival, and that's in Houston, Texas. Now, I grew up in Houston. Um, it's my hometown, and I made sure and I put that in my cover letter. So um, for you as a filmmaker, um, the key production team members, producer, writer, director, and then sometimes the star of the film, um, you know, where their hometown is, is also good information to know. So, um, you know, I submitted to World Fest and I specifically put in the cover letter, you know, um, I'm from Houston, you know, I'd love to show my film there, blah, 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 just, you know, put stuff about me. They love that because you're helping to represent their city. Of course, they're, you know, they're going to like, oh, that's more appealing to them than just, you know, some random person. So those little tidbits, you know, you want to make sure you put that in your cover letter and consider that when you're submitting to film festivals. Um, our stunt coordinator and fight choreographer, her name is Dawn Sam Alden, she founded um, a theater company called Babes with Blades in Chicago. Um, we just got into a film festival, which I will be announcing in a couple weeks, um, or in a week or so, um, in Chicago. And they know that, and they were so excited to hear that. So, you know, who, what cities do your key production team members, your star, have connections with? You know, where did they grow up? Um, that's important to know. Where's their hometown? So, um, you have a higher chance of getting into those festivals because, um, you know, they can say, hey, you know, we, oh, here's, you know, you know, here's Joanna Key, you know, coming from Hollywood, but she grew up here in Houston. Um, and, and then it's just fun also for me, you know, I get to go back to Houston and, you know, like, this is where I grew up and I get to show my film here. Um, so it's exciting for everybody, you know, it's beneficial for them and for you. So, um, so that's something else, um, you know, not just what film festivals um, do your key production team members have connections with, but what, what, what is their hometown? You know, where is their hometown? Um, is, is also really important, you know. Uh, so yeah, okay, I was gonna say something else, but I will put that off. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go to um, the other thing um, about researching film festivals. So researching film festivals is, it's gonna take you some time. Um, I obviously, you know, I just talked about part of your research is, you know, inquiring from other filmmakers, you know, what was your experience looking on, if you submit through Film Freeway, looking on Film Freeway to see what those reviews are. The other thing that I do is I look at pictures from the film festival. You know, I, there are some film festivals um, that I've seen and I've been to, um, they put out a great face, right? People show you what they want you to see on social media or anytime, really. Um, and then actually getting there was a different story. Um, you know, like there was this one where this, there was actually not screening rooms. It was just kind of like this big room that they had rented and they just kind of put up this very flimsy wall that did not you know, the sound was still like booming, put up this very flimsy wall, these crappy chairs. Um, and this, you know, it just, it was a very, just to, you know, make a small weird screening room in this big room. And they, it was, it was weird. It was not a good experience. Um, and so what I like to do is I also like to look at photos from the festival. So, um, on film freeway, that's another reason why I like film freeway is because you can look at pictures from the film festival. Um, the other thing that I do is, um, obviously, pe the festivals are going to post sometimes, you know, the pictures they want you to see, which is all good, you know, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, faking it, but I also want to see um, more reality. I have to do my research. So um, you'll have, when you submit through Without a Box or you submit through Film Freeway or if you're doing your research online, um, go to the film's website. How is their website? You know, how are they presenting themselves? Um, go to their social media pages. Uh, I look at their Facebook page and I look at their Twitter following. You know, do they have a big following? You know, how many people know about this festival? Um, and on your social media pages, a lot of times you'll find photos. Um, 
I look at a social media page and it's like, wow, they haven't updated this, you know, in two years. And actually the pictures that are on here, uh, this does not look like the best festival. Um, so actually I'm not going to uh, submit to this festival. So that's one of the things that helps me decide, you know, when I do my research, um, you know, looking at what this festival is actually like. Um, so uh, the other thing that is beneficial in your research is some people have done research for you already. <laughs> um, Movie Maker Magazine um, puts out a yearly review. Um, it's the, it's what is it called? The 50 festivals worth the entry fee. Find that article um, and don't just look up the one for the current year. Go back to the year before as well. Um, you know, but still do your research and make sure, you know, that they're, um, they're something that you want because something, some of the festivals are documentaries only you know some of them are very spe are specific you know so um that um movie maker magazine you can just google it 50 festivals worth the entry fee they've already done the research for you they tell you why this is a good festival they link you there um look that up that is always great to know um one of the things that i did because um my film is women centric it's a female led production team um i did a google search and i and i looked for you know best um women's film festivals uh and i looked up through there you know when i was searching on without a box or on film freeway you know i i, I searched for women's film festivals i looked for diversity so um knowing those key terms you know for your um film you know maybe you have a film that's about mental health um, maybe, you know, it's about depression or it's about, you know, something you're highlighting a certain issue, um, you know, look up mental health, you know, health film festival, you know, whatever, something that's going to be relevant because um, it's beneficial for both you and the festival to have you at their festival. So um, do your research, um, look at the film festivals that are worth the entry fee. And, um, and that'll also obviously come from, you know, uh, asking your fellow filmmakers, you know, uh, you know, what festivals do you recommend? And if you're not part of those forums, they're so easy to find. You know, you can search on Google. Facebook, obviously, is super easy. You just look up filmmakers groups, join them. Um, people, you know, they love to share their experience. So, and if you're not sure about a film festival, like I did some research, you know, again, same thing. You can go into these forums and you can say, hey, I'm thinking about this film festival. Does anybody have any experience with it? Um, and the other thing, um, when you're doing your film festival research is when you're looking up these individual festivals, look at what types of films they've accepted in the past. So obviously you can go to their website and you can see what have their selections been. Um, usually they'll have trailers or they'll have posters. You can read a little blurbs about their film, the films that have been accepted to see like, okay, you know, I have got this, um, you know, film that I shot you know, in Australia, and this, you know, festival is all about Australian stuff, you know, oh, great, I'm gonna go here, whatever. Um, <laughs> that was the best example. But um, that's another way, you know, you can kind of see, they know what their audience is, they know who, you know, what they're going to, you know, what their audience is going to want to see, and you can kind of check um, based on what their past selections have been. So that's another, another thing that you can do. Um, and also just reading, you know, the Film Freeway or the Without a Box or their mission statements on their website will tell you exactly what kind of stuff that they're looking for. You know, it's not like they're, they're hiding it. You just have to do the research to look for it. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I talked about word of mouth from other filmmakers asking for the recommendations and experiences. Um, and, um, I am going to, there was a couple questions that I had um, before, um, you know, I, before I did my Facebook live, um, I asked, you know, if anybody had any questions and, um, and John had a question. So John wanted to know, how do you eliminate the scams and how do you pick the ones that are actually worth submitting to so that people who matter in the industry will actually get to see your work? Okay. So that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, so how do you eliminate the scams? Well, first of all, you know, um, there's different scams out there. One of the things that I've heard about is, it's, a, it's, it's unfortunate, but you submit your film and um, pay 
you know, the submission fee, and then they don't even watch it. So they bear, they're basically just collecting money. Um, that's a scam. Um, and so uh, one of the things, one of the pieces of advice that I read, um, I believe it was from um, Alex Ferrari of Film Courage. Um, if you guys don't know who Alex Ferrari is, um, and uh, he's... He's awesome. He offers so much wisdom. He's got a great podcast, so look him up. Um, but I read this uh, suggestion from him, which was to, you know, when you upload your film um, for people to review it, you know, on Vimeo or, um, you know, if you use YouTube, most people use Vimeo. Um, his suggestion was to upload a different file for each festival that you submit to. Because on Vimeo, um, specifically Vimeo, I don't know if you can do it on YouTube because I use Vimeo for all of my film festival stuff. Um, you can see who has watched your film. You can see who's watched it and how long they've watched it. So he gave an example of one time where um, he saw that his film was only watched like 10%. And then the person just stopped watching and then they rejected him. And so their, you know, film festivals, their due diligence and their duty is to review all of their films. If they haven't actually reviewed your film, then they haven't actually, um, you know, you've paid for them to do that. That's what your submission fee is for. So if they didn't do it, um, you know, then you should get your submission fee back. So that's actually something that um, he said that he did. Um, and so his recommendation was, you know, one of the ways that you can help with that is to upload, you know, different one file, you know, for each of the festivals that you submit to, and then you can actually see if they've watched it. So that's helpful. Um, obviously, what I just talked about um, in doing your research with the film festivals, it takes more time. You know, you're not going to be able to just go in without a box or film freeway and just randomly, you know, like, I'm just going to click, 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 and I'm submitted, and yay! It's going to take more time, you know, if, you, if you're trying to avoid scams. Um, you know, those reviews, asking people beforehand, you know, you're just going to have to put more, a little bit more effort into it, basically, a little bit more time. Um, but it's worth it. I mean, it's totally worth it. That's what I did with The Protectress. And like I said, we have seven awards and we've been accepted into 16 film festivals. And we're not even, you know, we're, may we're maybe halfway done with our film festival run, like not even. So, um, so we have much more, you know, there's much more announcements I'm sure that I'm going to have about, you know, where we're going to be screening. Um, and I did all of this, you know, that I'm talking to you about. Um, when you submit on Without a Box um, or uh, Film Freeway, you know, you you input one Vimeo link that all of the festivals that you um, submit to um, watch. And so I do it that way. There's some film festivals where I do submit, you know, all by itself um, or, you know, a link that's all by itself so that I can see if they watched it. Um, but that's once, you know, I don't do that as often. I started doing that in the beginning. Um, but really from doing my research, I felt confident um, in, in where I was submitting it to. Um, but that's a suggestion that Alex Ferrari had and I really loved it and it helped him. So I would love to pass that on to you and check him out. Um, please check him out because he has some fantastic wisdom to offer. Um, if you haven't heard of him before. So, um, so that's, um, you know, about scams. And, um, and then the other question that John had was, how do you pick the ones that are actually worth submitting to so that people who matter in the industry will actually get to see your work? So that's a good question. And the answer is, it depends. It depends on what your goals are. You know, the, fe the festivals that are worth submitting to depends on your goals. Um, the people that really matter to see, you know, to see your work, that depends upon your goals. So, um, for example, for me, um, for Protectress, one of the things that I, like I said, I want as many eyeballs on it as possible. I want fans of my work and fans of Protectress specifically. Um, and yeah, I want exactly what you're talking about, John. I want people to... Um, I want to connect with those industry people that are going to, if, you know, they're the ones that will help me to, you know, make the feature or connections for later, you know, whatever. Um, so first of all, let me say, you can never, ever, ever control who is going to see your work. Never. You never know who's going to be in the audience. So you have to just basically give yourself the best chance of doing that. Um, so when I'm submitting, I am really conscious that I want to meet people in my industry. And so I am submitting to the bigger markets in festivals that are in the bigger markets, Los Angeles, 
Atlanta, um, Chicago, New York, Austin. So, you know, those are where more likely people that are actually in the industry are going to attend that event and watch your festival or watch your festival, watch your film. Um, so you're just basically, you can't control it. You just have to give yourself the best chance possible. Um, and then actually, you know, for the people that, that, um, you know, that you actually want to see your film, um, like I said, one of my goals was that I want to create fans of my work. So I, one of the things that we have gotten accepted into is a lot of comic cons. So those, even though they're not industry people, there's very little chance that I'm going to have, you know, somebody in this industry, you know, watch it there and like, hey, I want to work with that person. It doesn't mean there's not a chance. But I submitted and I'm very happy. I'm so excited about being in those festivals because those are my people. That's my audience. Those are the people I want to reach. The more fans that I have of my work, um, and specifically, you know, with Protectress, my goal is to, you know, make it a feature. I love fantasy in action. I would love to act in more fantasy in action. The more people that I have that know who I am, that know my work in that genre, that are fans of that work, um, you know, it's, it, it's the entrepreneur mindset. You know, entrepreneurs, you not only have to create a product or a service, but that you also have to create the demand for your product or service. So that's what you're doing. So when you say, you know, the, you know making sure that the right people see it, it depends on your goals, right? So, um, so if you actually want, you know, more industry people to see it, concentrate on, you know, where is the industry, you know, more, more prevalent, obviously, you know, like Hollywood, um, you know, Toronto, you know, those, those kind of cities, what festivals are there. And the other thing that you have to consider with any cities, um, and especially those bigger cities, um, some film festivals in those cities will be restrictive. Um, you know, they want you to be a premiere there. And if you're not a premiere, um, then you won't be able to submit to their festival. So you have to, um, even with shorts, um, so you have to read the rules on, um, you know, whenever you look up a film festival on Film Freeway, without a box, on their website, read their rules. Um, because um, it's, it's less, with short films, the good news is that it is uh, less of a rule um, more so they have that for features that they want to be a premiere. They want you to premiere with them. Um, but it's still a factor. Especially in the, um, bigger film festivals. Um, you know, South by Southwest or TIFF or, you know, things like that. Um, so you just have to, um, you know, look out for that. Look out for the rules. Um, and yeah, so I hope that answers your question, John. Um, you know, one of the um, one of the film festivals that I really like. There's this monthly film festival here in LA. Um, it's called New Filmmakers Film Festival, um, and uh, it's attended by industry people every month. Um, people are at, are looking for new work there. Um, so that um, if I was going to recommend a specific one, um, I would say go for that. But again, it depends on your project because they are looking for. They're not looking for typically like a fantasy action like mine, like Protectress. So you have to go to their website, see the kinds of things that they've um, accepted in the past and specifically new filmmakers. I think they're in other cities, but they started in LA and it's biggest in LA, monthly film festival, in-person film festival. Um, and sometimes they have themes. Um, so, you know, I think one, one month, um, it was like diversity. Another month was like, I forget, there was like a certain topic. They have certain themes. So do your research. Once again, it's research, research, research. Okay. Um, so I hope that answered your question, John. Um, and let's see. Um, I have another question here and it's from Abigail. So Abigail wanted to know, there are many other outlets to submit to that cost money and either accept or reject you. Short of the week, no budge, film shortage, etc. These websites and a Vimeo pick are really just as, if not more important for short films than festivals. So if you'd speak to, about that world, that would be cool. Absolutely, I'll speak about that, especially because I have experience with that. Um, so Protectress, um, I had a certain plan. So you have to kind of decide what your film uh, festival plan is gonna be, what your release plan is going to be. Um, and my release plan came from what my goals are. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, my goal, 
um, is to, first of all, with this film, I'm, it's a proof of concept. I want to make it a feature. I want to connect with other people in my industry. I want to create fans of my work. Um, and I made this a new media project. So new media, um, it's a SAG new media contract that I did it under. And that meant that I have to premiere it online, which I wanted to do anyways, because when you put something online, um, anybody can see it. Like, you know, freaking somebody, you know, in Zimbabwe could watch my film if they wanted to. Um, and so, you know, that was perfect for me because I wanted as many eyeballs on my film as possible. Um, and so we actually premiered, um, we premiered with Film Shortage. Um, we, my trailer premiered on Film Shortage and my film, the online premiere was on Film Shortage. I put it online for um, two months and then I took it off. So it's currently offline for the festival run and I did that on purpose. This was just my plan. Um, uh, I did that because it didn't make sense to me to have it viewable anywhere and everywhere and also viewable at the film circuit. Um, it creates demand, you know, supply and demand creates demand whenever your um, product or service, or, you know, your film and can only be viewed in certain places. So, um, so that's why I did that. Um, so as far as, you know, these online websites, first of all, if you're going to premiere online, you have to also just keep in mind that it's going to limit some of the film festivals that you can um, go into if you go online first. So that's what I did. Typically, um, the kind of traditional thing that people have done is they go the film festival route and then they release it online. I did the opposite. Um, and I'm really happy with what I did because of what my goals are. Um, so one of the things that I did was I sought out online film festivals and not just film shortage. Um, you know, I was looking at, you know, I'm going to premiere online. What can I do to reach the biggest audience possible? You know, what can I do to like help promote my film? Being affiliated with one of these sites, um, premiering with one of them is so advantageous for that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why we got a lot of views and I'm sorry, I don't remember what the views are right now, but we got a whole bunch of views on our trailer. We started bringing fans in just from the trailer. We, we brought fans in from having it out online and premiering online. Um, it just boosts your signal um, because you're not just putting out to your friends and family, you are also connecting to their audience and everybody that's you know a fan of their social media and their website and everything, um, people follow them for a reason. You know, people wanna see their, their work. So you're boosting your signal um, and that's fantastic. Um, you have somebody else that's backing up your project um, that's affiliating their name um, with yours. Those websites like Film Shortage and I'm Short of the Week, um, they don't cost a lot of money to submit to them. Um, Short of the week, I found um, is a little bit more. I would say like, uh, I mean, you can and you can see obviously online all of the um, films that they've selected, so you can see the type of things that they, um, you know, will put up and and back up, um, and select. Um, Short of the week is more like a, a bigger film festival. I want to say um, the type of work that they accept. Um, so, like, my film, Protectress, is, you know, like I said, genre film. It's not really short of the weeks kind of thing. Um, film Shortage, like, that was our home. Um, that's where we did our online premiere. Um, but, but it also, you know, now that I'm doing my film festival, I have to also be a little bit more careful whenever I am submitting to film festivals because I have to make sure that they don't have a stipulation that says in the rules you cannot have had um, an exhibition online. Um, some film festivals will not uh, accept your film, um, your short film, if you if it's available online to view at the moment or if it's ever been online. So you have to be careful about that if you're going to decide to do an online premiere first or put it online first or even just have it online, you know, while you're submitting to festivals. Um, it used to be a lot more limiting. I actually don't find that I'm really hindered by it too much. Um, because people are understanding new media more now. It's a, it's a new thing, they're getting used to it. So um, I'm not, um, I haven't really found it too limiting. There's some, you know, there's a couple festivals that I wish that I could have submitted to, but it hasn't been that big of a deal. Um, so, um, so it's totally worth it. 
And um, the other thing that I uh, wanted to say about this specific thing is um, you were asking, Abigail asked, uh, uh, oh, she talked about the Vimeo pic. Um, Vimeo pic is, again, it's like, it's so, uh, Vimeo pic is like, you know, it's, it's, oh, it's like the Oprah Book Club. That's what it's like. It's like, if you, if you get a Vimeo pic, you're like, oh, you got that stamp on your cover, like, kind of thing. And, like, more people are going to watch your film. It's awesome. But you can't, it's so, um, elusive, I guess, you know, like, no, you can't, it's cool to submit for that. But, um, I'm, you know, if, if it'll help you, I think I submitted for it. I can't remember. I can't remember if I did or not. Anyways, Vimeo just picks it based based off of, you know, who, you know, um, you put your film up and then you'll see if they, they pick it or not. Um, uh, but yeah, if you go for that, I mean, anything that helps your film get recognition, um, just helps boost your signal. It helps give you more credibility as a filmmaker. Now, one of the th other things that I wanted to speak about regarding um, online film festivals like this, you know, short of the week, that kind of thing. And also, I'm just, I'm specifically, I'm going to say online film festivals, because that's the other thing that you need to look out for when you're looking at film festivals is, is this an online film festival? Um, make sure that you read the description of the film festival, because um, that's actually what was one of my first target film festivals were online film festivals, because I knew that I was going to be online for two months. So I specifically looked for online film festivals. And then after that, I cut it off and I'm not gonna be submitting to online film festivals again until um, we're done with our um, festival run. And I put it back online because it will be on, back online later in the future. Um, I just don't know when yet. So um, online film festivals, monthly, they're usually monthly film festivals. And the thing that's great about these film festivals is that you are more likely to win an award um, because it's monthly, um, because it's online, not a lot of people are submitting to those yet. They're not, because it's not like you get to, it's not a traditional film festival experience. You know, you're not submitting and then yay, it's this whole thing. We get to go and watch our film in a theater. It's kind of, honestly, it's a, it's a little bit more like paid awards in a certain way. You are competing with other people, but there's less competition because it's a monthly festival. And because when you submit to these monthly online film festivals, you submit for a specific award to be considered for a specific award. And they usually have a whole list of awards. And so then that means that people are spread out among that those different categories rather than, you know, some fest film festivals will only have a couple awards. If one of your goals is that you wanna win awards, one of my recommendations, especially with a short film, is that you submit to these online monthly film festivals. Um, they, you're, they're, you're not gonna have the same like name recognition, like, oh, we got into, you know, we got into TIFF, you know, or, or whatever. You're not gonna get, you know, you have, you're gonna get laurels, but more so you're gonna get, it's, it's, what I love about them is that they're trying to help filmmakers by giving them recognition that might not, they may not get otherwise. Um, and so um, we won Best Fantasy, we won Best Action, um, I won Best Fantasy of the Year, which actually is like a huge thing because that means that um, we were competing with all of the fantasies that had been submitted for the entire year for this online film festival and we won Best Fantasy of the Year, which is amazing. And so if you're looking to win awards, one of my suggestions um, is that you submit to one of these online film festivals. Um, now they do have, um, they do have options where even though you submit, you don't have to exhibit your film online. You can just be considered for the award and they'll just announce that you won the award and you don't even have to put your film online. So that's a possibility. Um, it's basically like, are you looking to win an award is basically how I look at it. Um, are you looking to start, kind of kind of kickstart your laurels, you know, get your laurels going? Um, you're more likely to get accepted by one of those film festivals. That's an online monthly film festival um, and win an award. So, um, but, <laughs> but with anything, with any film festival, um, you gotta have a good film. So, <laughs> so, you know, with all of my advice and all of my offerings, you know, that I, that I'm giving today, um, first of all, if you have any questions, cause I, there's just so much to talk about with film festivals, um, put a comment, shoot me an email, um, here, I'll put my email in here. You can leave a comment. I watch, you know, I monitor the comments afterwards 
and um, you know I'll answer any questions if there's anything I started to talk about or a question that you have um, that I didn't get to answer um, you know put it in there and um, but like I was saying you know the first thing that really matters is that you need to have a good film um, because it doesn't matter you can do all the research in the world but if you don't have a solid film it doesn't matter <laughs> it doesn't matter you know how many film festivals you submit to you're going to be wasting your money if you have not developed and, and made a good product so um, i'm just going to suggest that you know if you want to you can watch on one of my past tea with keys um it's i just put it in the comments it's um the five things that helped my film be a success and and just forewarning you the audio on that is a little bit wonky you get used to it after a little bit but um but it's good information in there that um that can help you um, hopefully, you know, when you're in your development process and, and making your film. Because the first thing is to have a film that you, you're proud of and um, and that's great, that people are going to want to see, um, that you love, and um, and then submitting to the film festivals, you know, comes after that. So um, I'm just going to look at my notes here and see if I have anything else. Um, well, one of the things that I just want to mention, a couple other things before I end here, is is about premiering your film. Um, like I said, I chose to film. Uh, I chose to premiere my festival. My bleh, I chose to premiere my film that's currently on the festival circuit, Protectress. I chose to premiere it online. Um, like I said, if you choose to do that, you can limit. You will limit the festivals that you can submit it to. Um, um, but the other thing is, um, there was some advice that was given to me about that your premiere is a big deal. Who you choose to premiere with is a big deal. Um, honestly, for a short film, um, I didn't find that to be true. Um, I, I really didn't. I can I can definitely see how with a feature that would be true, but not for a short. So, um, you know, if you want to, I did hold out for a little bit because I was like, okay, let's see if I can get into any of these bigger film festivals and premiere with them because that would be great to say obviously you know we got into you know whatever and that we're premiering with you know this big film festival um but in the end it really didn't matter and um and so um that's just something i wanted to mention uh, uh, specifically for short films it doesn't really matter as much who you premiere with but you know yeah if you can premiere with south by southwest or you know something like that cool man do it you know um because uh, what I the um, the feedback that I was given was you know hold out hold out until you see if you've been accepted into these bigger film festivals um, that basically means that you could get accepted to other f festivals in the meantime um, and you would have to turn them down um, because you're waiting for these bigger film festivals I can see you know with a feature that's more important than a short. Um, but if that is something that's part of your goals, again, it goes back to your goals. To me, it wasn't as important. Um, I didn't find it as important. So, um, so yeah, that's specifically for a short film. And the other thing I want to talk about film festival strategy, just one more thing is, um, I forget actually where I read this, but I did a lot of research on film festival strategy and that's something that I suggest that you do. Um, shorts, you know, you're not you're not looking for, you know, a big film market because you're not looking to get distribution, you know, most of the time. Um, you know, if you are, that's a, that's a different thing. But, you know, you're not going to... It's just, it's a different, it's a different animal because usually you have different goals with shorts. And, um, and so one of the strategies that I saw that I like to follow is um, that you pick... You pick what your big ones are that you want to submit to. Like these are the ones that I have. I think I have a good chance of getting into with my film um, that I'd love to get into. And you submit to a couple big ones. And then you kind of, it's kind of like a pyramid. You have a couple big ones at the top. You have a couple medium um, film festivals. And then you have, you know, much more small ones at the bottom. You have a bigger chance, a greater chance of getting into the smaller film festivals that are at the bottom because there's less competition, especially if the ones that are in their first year, second year, third year even, um, they'll be looking for films because not a lot of people know them yet. So um, you have a greater chance of getting into these ones down here, you know, less of a chance of the medium ones and even, you know, smaller chance of the ones that are at the top. Don't waste your money on all of the big ones. Choose a couple if you don't get into them not a big deal. You have so many to choose from. Think about what your goals are. Um, 
when you meet your goals, that that is really what's going to kind of, you know, fulfill you as an artist. Um, that's what I found in my film festival run, um, you know. Um, and honestly, I forgot to mention one of the one of my goals was that I did want to uh, win awards because I wanted to. Again, it helps me build an audience. It helps me build credibility in the industry, and people are more likely to know your name. It's like, hey, you know, so and so won an award, whatever. So, um, whew, I always feel like like I've been talking forever <laughs> at the end of my tea with key episodes. So that is. Um, that is my spiel about submitting a short to film festivals. Um, I feel like I could talk about more. Um, so I'd really love to hear from you if you have any questions, um, if you found this helpful, if there's anything you'd love to me, for me to expand on. Um, there's other things that, you know, we could talk about later, you know, like deliverables, um, press kits, um, press releases, all of that. Um, that's a whole other animal. Um, but... Uh, I hope this was informative for you. Please let me know if you have questions. Like I said, pop it in the comments. You can shoot me an email at Tea with Key. And um, my next episode of Tea with Key will be next Wednesday on June 27th at 3 p.m. Pacific. And I will see you then. Until then, I hope you have a good week. And I'll see you next time. Bye.